The seventh generation Fiesta now offers electrified engine technology and, whether you want it as a conventional Super Mini, a would-be crossover or a hot hatch, you'll find that the improved version of this Mark 7 model has grown up a bit. It still, though, hasn't lost the youthful, eager feel that endeared previous generation models to so many Super Mini buyers. This is how you write a bestseller. So, to the big questions here, what's the electrified engineering now added to this 7th generation Fiesta really like? And has it in any way diluted this car's greatest calling card, its energetic drive dynamics? It certainly shouldn't have. Ford's choice of mild hybrid tech here, rather than the more efficient full hybrid technology that rivals like Renault and Honda and Toyota offer in this segment, means that the weight penalty for this technology is as relatively slight as the frugality benefits that it delivers. Uh, and that will be good news if you're the kind of person who likes their driving. Variations on the Fiesta theme may come and go, but before driving any version of Ford's definitive Super Mini, there's one thing that you almost always know for certain, that it'll be a great steer. Now this time around, the Blue Oval brand sought to retain that traditional Fiesta attribute, yet at the same time to introduce a standard of ride quality that was closer to that that was delivered by arch rivals like Volkswagen's Polo. The feel you'll get from this Fiesta depends quite a lot on the variant of it you choose. Uh, that's because two quite different chassis configurations have been used across the range, uh, with a firmer setup used for the very sporty ST models, like the one I'm driving now, and a softer one that features elsewhere in the range on the cars that the majority of customers will actually end up with. On such mainstream versions, this car isn't quite the sharp and eager thing we remember from earlier Fiesta generations, but it still can offer a level of handling joie de vivre that's beyond anything that its competitors can manage, and that's thanks to sharp electric steering, a stiff, lightweight body, and an effective torque vectoring system, which uh, really helps you get down the grip through the corners. You'll be wanting to know more, though, about the electrified engineering that we mentioned earlier. You don't actually have to have it. Of the three-cylinder petrol engines which now exclusively make up the Fiesta range, at the time of this test in spring 2021, three non-electrified units remained. A base 75 PS normally aspirated TIVCT power plant, the old 100 PS 1-litre EcoBoost engine and the ST hot hatch models 1.5-litre 200 PS powertrain. But these are now minority choices. Almost all Fiestas nowadays are leased or sold with the MHEV mild hybrid engine that we're trying here. It's a variation on Ford's usual one litre three cylinder EcoBoost petrol unit, uh, which is offered in either 125 PS or, as in this case, in 155 PS guises. Mild hybrid engineering is nothing like as efficient as full hybrid tech, but it doesn't come with a big fat price premium and it boosts driver feel because it's lighter and it adds a slice of extra pulling power just when you need it most. The setup works via a beefed up starter generator driven by a belt at the front of the engine and that stores the energy harvested when you brake or decelerate in a tiny 48 volt lithium ion battery secreted at the back of the car. Now this provides a bit of extra zip when you accelerate, Ford says up to 50 newton meters of extra torque and it delivers a little electric boost from low revs to torque fill while you're waiting for the turbo to spool up. That has a lot to do with this car's fizzy and revy feel. But it also plays its part in creating efficiency stats which are improved by a small but important amount over those that you get from a conventionally engined rival in this class. The 125 PS version of the MHEV Fiesta returns up to 57.6 miles per gallon on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. That is in manual form, a freshly introduced 7-speed dual-clutch auto gearbox is also offered with this unit. Visually, there are a few changes to this car as part of the 2020 model year electrified update, which in some ways is a bit disappointing because this Fiesta should look different. It shares virtually nothing with the 6th generation model that sees production in 2017. Instead, at first glance, you might mistake it for just about any Fiesta made in the last decade. The company's European design director, Joel Pieskowski, says that he wanted to evolve the styling in a way that would make it uh, more contemporary without losing the essential fiestiness that customers love. Well, that's what's been delivered here.
All of this is welcome, but as we've been saying, much of the improvement is invisible. So time to take you to a part of the car where the changes made over the last few years really are very evident. Here at the wheel, you really will notice the cabin of this Fiesta is very different if you haven't tried one for a few years. What might be familiar, though, is a choice of trim materials that remind you of this car's position at the budget end of Ford's model lineup. Uh, perhaps aware of this, the Blue Oval brand has now standardised some luxury features like a quick clear front windscreen uh, and also velour floor mats. Uh, that's across the range and they've tried to add in a more premium feel to the pricier variants, the red stitch trimming of this plush ST Line Edition X variant for example. Ford has also got rid of the previous poverty spec smaller sizes for the Sync 3 center dash touchscreen. Uh, this 8 inch monitor is now standard whichever trim level you select. As part of this model update, the company has improved this monitor's user interface with bigger buttons and most models get it complete with navigation and also the brand's clever Ford Pass Connect built-in modem that allows for in-car Wi-Fi and also for remote interaction with your Fiesta via your smartphone. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration is of course included and all the cabin basics have been well executed. It's really easy to find a comfortable driving position. Uh, the instruments, they're clear and there's plenty of interior storage. So, time to take a seat in the rear. Now, if you come to this car fresh from ownership of a pre-2017 era Mark VI model, it's likely that you'll view Ford's greater efforts in this part of the cabin in a positive light. Uh, there is, after all, 16 millimeters more knee room than there was with that uh, previous generation design. Plus the seats, uh, they're softer and they offer greater side-to-side -side support. Should you be trying a Fiesta, however, having sampled a more spacious Super Mini rival, and there are plenty of those, then you'll probably be a little less inclined to be so generous. Finally, we'll take a look in the boot. Back in 2017, when we first tested this Mark 7 model, we hoped that the lengthier platform would bring this Ford closer to the prevailing Super Mini standard for luggage capacity. Uh, we were, however, somewhat disappointed to find that an improvement of only 17 litres had been made. Uh, that still is an issue for us. The luggage bay is rated at 292 litres for both body shapes, and that's a figure that most rivals can comfortably improve on. Still, it will be enough for a folded push chair and the contents of the weekly shop, and that's all that most owners will need. If you are able to flatten the 60-40 split folding rear backrest, you'll find that the revealed cargo floor ends up with quite a step in it, but the total capacity figure looks rather better by segment standards, uh, 1,093 litres. The Ford Fiesta has always been a vehicle that the British public has warmed to. But the truth is that before this seventh generation model arrived, super mini buyers chose this car either because it was great to drive or because they'd been offered a deal that was too good to turn down. There really wasn't any other reason to buy one. Uh, this Mark 7 model is set out to change all that though. It's smarter to look at, it's smarter to sit in, and it's smarter to operate. So in short, this is more than ever a small car that super mini buyers simply can't ignore.